China created a sea in the middle of the desert to raise seafood yields surprises the world. When you think about the people who live in the desert, you might picture a lot of things. The intense heat of the sand, the sand dunes stretching for miles, and maybe even some cacti with their sharp thorns. It's a place where the days are scorching hot and the nights can be freezing cold. That's just how it is in the desert. But did you know that even in the middle of all that sand and heat, you can find something unexpected? Something like fresh seafood. Yes, you heard that right. China has done something amazing in deserts by using special technology to turn them green and even create a sea where they can grow lots of seafood. This has amazed people around the world. For example, in Xinjiang, they've turned a long desert highway into a green forest and have made big progress in growing both freshwater and saltwater fish in the desert. Xinjiang Aquaculture Company, started in 2022, has succeeded in making conditions like seawater on the edge of the desert to grow seafood. Mr. Chen Zhen, who leads the project, explained that the salty water in southern Xinjiang is almost as salty as seawater. They're using this salty soil and adjusting the water to be like seawater to help breed different kinds of seafood. They're also dealing with the Fukushima disaster by stopping all seafood from Japan. The company in charge of the project has set up six indoor ponds with greenhouses to help grow seafood even in Xinjiang's harsh weather. The company's been doing well in making eight types of seafood. They start by growing them inside and then move them to outdoor ponds to keep growing. Chinese news has talked a lot about how Xinjiang is making more seafood, showing how China is trying to make farming better and make sure there's enough food for everyone. Guo Junu, who works at Xinjiang Bentang Biotechnology Company, talked about how selling black tiger shrimp for 200 yen per kilogram has helped local people make more money and live better. China is already the biggest seafood maker in the world, making at least 18% of all the seafood caught globally. They're focusing on making sure they have enough food, because the world's food market can be unstable because of things like fights between countries, climate change, and wars. So, China's working hard to make farming stronger. Xinjiang is part of a project to grow a special type of rice that can handle salty soil and alkaline conditions, known as seawater rice. This is one of the seven places in China testing this rice to help farmers in tough environments grow more crops. But in Xinjiang, the dry weather makes farming hard, especially for fish. Before, fish farms could use water from high up lakes or pump water from underground. But now, it's getting harder to find enough water. To fix this and make more seafood, Xinjiang is making plans to increase seafood production to 30,000 tons by 2025. This is part of China's bigger plan to increase seafood production to 69 million tons by the same year. Fresh water fishing is important for the economy in Xinjiang, even though it's usually dry there. Boston Lake is the largest freshwater lake in China, and it's busiest for fishing from August to October. Since 2018, a lot of water from the Kaidu River has flowed into the lake, making it cleaner and better for fishing. There are big areas of reeds in the lake, which clean the water and provide homes for birds and water animals. Because the lake is cleaner now, it's the biggest place in Xinjiang for catching fish. Every year, more than four tons of seafood like grass carp, freshwater shrimp, and crabs are caught there. Guan Zhanu runs a crab farm near the lake. Last year, they released 36 million baby crabs into the lake and caught them in August. This year, they're planning to bring in Australian freshwater lobsters and expand the crab farm because more people want Xinjiang seafood. In 2022, Xinjiang's total seafood output reached 173 tons, ranking second among the five provinces and autonomous regions in northwest China. The concept of creating a sea in the middle of a desert has been discussed for a long time. Back in 1957, scientists proposed the idea of creating a sea in the Sahara Desert. The first person to advocate for this idea was Scottish engineer Donald Mackenzie. He envisioned the Elge Basin to transform it into the Sahara Sea. Mackenzie's plan involved constructing a 644-kilometer-long canal from Morocco to the basin, thus forming an inland sea as vast as Ireland, spanning over 96,560 square kilometers. 
Similarly, in the 1870s, Captain François Eli Rouda of the French Army drew inspiration from the Suez Canal. He proposed building a 193-kilometer-long canal to connect the Mediterranean Sea with the Chot El Fajaj Salt Lake area in the Sahara Desert of southern Tunisia. This ambitious project aimed to inundate 4,828 square kilometers of sandy land. The idea garnered support from Ferdinand de la Sepp, a renowned French diplomat famous for overseeing the construction of the Suez Canal. Implementing the idea of creating a sea in the Sahara Desert back then came with a price tag of about 25 million francs, equivalent to 4.2 million US dollars. This plan aimed to open up more trade routes for French ships and to make central North Africa a wetter and more fertile region. Additionally, rising costs deterred the realization of this ambitious plan. Despite its failure, the concept inspired writer Jules Verne to incorporate the idea of canal construction in his novel Invasion of the Sea in 1905, where an earthquake contributes to the creation of an inland sea in northern Africa. Another proposal to bring the sea into the Sahara Desert was made in Egypt, known as the Plowshare Project. This initiative, led by the US Atomic Energy Commission, envisioned using nuclear bombs to create a canal that would flood the Quara Depression, situated 60 meters below sea level. However, international agreements prohibiting the detonation of nuclear bombs halted this project, leading to its discontinuation in 1977. In 2018, a Silicon Valley company named Y Combinator introduced an idea to combat global warming by flooding the Algodone Desert area in California. Their plan involved creating millions of 0.4 hectare water reservoirs to grow algae, serving as carbon sinks. However, with an estimated cost of about 50 trillion US dollars, this project has not been widely promoted. Currently, desertification poses a significant threat to the world. The international community recognizes desertification as a broad problem affecting economies, societies, and environments worldwide. The United Nations has warned that desertification represents one of the biggest environmental challenges of our time. By 2030, the fashion industry is projected to consume 35% more land, primarily for raw material production for low-cost fashion. Additionally, the amount of food lost or wasted annually is equivalent to the production capacity of 1.4 billion hectares of productive land. To ensure global food security, an additional 3.3 billion hectares of land will be needed for food production by 2030. Each year, over 12 million hectares of land are lost due to land degradation, desertification and recurring droughts. China's remarkable success in greening deserts and transforming them into economically viable areas has addressed a challenging issue for the world. This achievement highlights the potential for combating desertification and revitalizing arid regions through innovative approaches. What are your thoughts on China's incredible success? Feel free to share in the comments below.